Now let us move on to the outflow tracks and the characteristic feature of the outflow tracks is that they cross each other. The first outflow track is a LVOT which goes from left to the right side and the second outflow track is a RVOT which goes from the right side towards the spine, towards the, pul that's the pulmonary artery. Right, so this is, it gets a little more difficult uh, how to approach the anomalies of outflow tracks. So I am proposing a very simple algorithm for you. First you do is look at the number of outflow tracks, 2 or 1. If it is 2, look at the great artery relationship, whether they are normally related. Normally related means pulmonary artery is anterior, aorta is posterior. So two outflow tracks with normally related great arteries essentially is tetralogy of fallow or one of its variants which we will be discussing. If the outflow tracks are abnormal, the transposition, then you are dealing with TGA. So you can have different types of TGA, TGA with intact septum, TGA with VSD, a double outlet right ventricle with a TGA transposition type relationship of the outflow tracks or a corrected transposition. So it is very simple, two outflow tracks normally related mostly fall into the tetralogy of fallow group, while it, if it is transposed with iota as anterior, then it is a TGA group. Then there is this entity called a single outflow tract and there are only two conditions in that, that is tetralogy of fallow with pulmonary atresia. The only outflow is iota and common arterial trunk or truncus arteriosus. Now from today onwards, I do not want anybody of you to just label any condition where there is a single outflow tract as common arterial trunk. It is absurd and wrong because we will show you later that many people in fact label pulmonary atresia also as common arterial trunk. That is not correct. It should be a single outflow tract and there is a very clear way by which you can differentiate between the two and I am going to come to that very soon. So this is how I approached the number of outflow tracks and the relationship of the outflow tracks. So let us see the first condition which is a very easy condition. So you can see the left and the right ventricles are marked and now you see that as we move towards the outflow, the LVOT, a large ventricular septal defect is coming. And when we put color flow, you see that there is both the ventricles are rejecting into the same outflow. So very classical uh, picture that we see and in fact there is even a flow aliasing. And finally when we go to the three vessel view, you see the pulmonary artery is anterior, you can nicely see that bifurcating as well. There is flow as well into the pulmonary artery and you can see that when you look at the size of the pulmonary artery and iota, the PA is smaller. So you have balanced ventricles, a large ventricular septal defect, there is an overriding vessel which is iota and there is a small pulmonary artery, hence it is the tetralogy of fallow, that is the diagnosis. So the hallmark feature of tetralogy of fallow is this. So normally there is, an in, there is a feature in the heart which is called the septoiotic continuity. There is a continuity between the ventricular septum and the anterior aortic wall. So in tetralogy of fallow that is lost. So there is septoiotic discontinuity. So this is another example in the lateral view, septoiotic continuity and here you see the septoiotic discontinuity and that results in the VSD. So the iota moves rightward which is also called text position of the iota. And this is one situation where I make some measurements as well. So in tetralogy you should measure the iota, the pulmonary artery, again the iota pulmonary artery, the pulmonary valve, the right and the left pulmonary arteries. Now this is very important because a very small pulmonary artery means it is the most severe form of tetralogy. So a very very useful clue to assess the severity of tetralogy is the pulmonary artery to iota ratio. Normally the pulmonary artery is a bit larger than the iota. So the PA to iota ratio would be about more than 1. In mild forms of tetralogy the PA iota ratio will be somewhere around 0 0.7 or higher. So that is what we said. PA will be small but the PA to iota ratio will be about 0 0.07 or more. While in very severe form of tetralogy as we can see in this picture, the PA to iota ratio is less than 0 0.5, very small. So this is a very blue kind of stuff. So the prognostication or how severe the tetralogy, this only means that the baby is likely to be born with a 
critical circulation after birth, which means that those babies with tetralogy with severe uh, TOF should be ideally born in a tertiary center. With good treatment, the, the, there is no difference in outcomes between the severe TOF and, uh, and the mild TOF. All of them can be corrected well. And hence, it's important to identify these features only to make sure that the newborn care is uh, given to these patients. So, one is the pulmonary artery size and ratio, which I showed. Second is the color flow pattern. Now, if you have a retrograde flow of uh, through the ductus arteriosus into the PA, that's a reverse flow, that indicates that uh, that is a very severe uh, TOF or al almost pulmonary atresia. The third thing is to look for pulmonary vent Doppler. And if you high, get a very high Doppler signals, like the values are shown here, at 20 weeks more than 87.5 centimeters, or at 34 35 weeks more than 150 centimeters, this may indicate a very severe obstruction. I don't uh, look at the third feature, but rather I focus on the size and the color flow patterns more. This is, I just quoted because one study had published this data. Now, how do you differentiate between a double outlet right ventricle and uh, tetralogy of fallow? So, DORV can be of different types and I am not going to talk about the DORV types in detail here. But this is a type of DORV where uh, the great arteries are normally related. So, it is very similar to tetralogy of fallow. Now, one way to differentiate is that you look at the degree of the aortic override. So, this is tough and the aortic override is typically 50 percent. That is it. While in DORV, the degree of aortic override will be much more. Most of the aorta will be coming from the right ventricle in DORV, while in tetralogy, it's just about 50%. So, this is one uh, simple way. There are other ways as well, which uh, we are not going to do, uh, discuss in detail. For pediatric cardiologists, we say aortomital discontinuity and so on, but it's, uh, it's very simply, if you see the degree of override, that's a very useful uh, feature. Now, I am going to show you a very important lesion here. Obviously, the four chamber view look really normal, but when you look at the first outflow tract, you see that normally the LVOT, you would have expected it to go towards the right side, but here it is not going to the right side. So, this is the normal direction of the LVOT if it is iota. But here, you see that not just the fact that the, the, the direction is uh, different, but you can also see that the first outflow which is arising from the left ventricle is dividing as well. So, it is a dividing vessel and it runs posteriorly towards the spine rather than going towards the uh, right shoulder. So, that is classical pulmonary artery from the left ventricle. And the second outflow as we can see here is arising from the RV that is again non-dividing vessel and the three vessel view we get the characteristic sign. We see only two vessels. Uh, non-dividing iota and the SVC. So, just two vessels to the three vessel view. So, these features are characteristic of transposition of great arteries. So, the normal uh, uh, heart, you find the LVOT going in this direction towards the right and the RVOT going in this direction towards the left. So, they cross each other. In PGA, first outflow is LVOT which goes right down, tips down towards the spine and the second outflow is RVOT, which is iota, running parallel to each other. So, there is no crossover in TGA, it's parallel outflow. So, this is very, very, very critical uh, in TGA and to demonstrate the, the loss of uh, crossing. The anterior outflow in TGA continues as the arch. Normally, the anterior outflow is the pulmonary artery that continues as ductus arteriosus. And here in TGA, that continues as the aortic arch. So, there's a very characteristic curved continuation of the anterior outflow or the iota. That is beautifully shown in this uh, uh, 4D rendered picture. You can see that the anterior vessel is the iotic arch. You can see that beautifully seen, the iotic arch with the three branches coming off from it. So, that is the classical, uh, uh, the iota, iota in PGA it's arising from the right ventricle and that is the anterior vessel. In addition, in the third trimester when you image, you should also look at the foramen ovale and the ductus arteriosus in TGA. Some cases you can have restricted foramen ovale and ductus arteriosus. These are very, very important from a prognostic point of view. This indicates that the baby is likely to be born very severe cyanosis after birth, needing an emergency uh, intervention. So, transposition is essentially a very good lesion. 
this is one of the best conditions to pick up in utero and uh, uh, refer in utero for a delivery in a tertiary pediatric cardiac facility. And if you have a feature like a restrictive foramen ovary, that means that the baby may need an emergency cardiac intervention called balloon septostomy immediately after birth. But that is life saving and uh, a prenatal diagnosis can save the baby. So I don't think in, uh, I will come to the prognostication later, but this is uh, pretty important. Now I am showing you another uh, case in which there is a transposition like situation, but you see here that both the outflows are coming off from the right ventricle here. Very nicely seen here. The right ventricle is the one which gives rise to both the outflow tracks. So it's a double outlet right ventricle and you can see the color flow of the VSD also there. And again the aorta um, continues, uh, the anterior outflow continues as the aorta here. So it's a DORB TGA type. And this is a 4D rendered picture. The iota AO is completely from the right ventricle, while the pulmonary artery is overriding the VSD and predominantly from the left ventricle. So this is the inside of the heart and DORB. You see the right ventricle, the left ventricle. The iota is completely arising from the right ventricle, while the sorry, I'll just do that again. Sorry, uh, while the uh, pulmonary artery is arising uh, uh, predominantly from the overriding the VSD and arising from both the ventricles. So this is an example of a DRV TGA type. So the three vessel view, so which I normal three vessel view as shown here, the three vessel view in TGA typically shows only two vessels. But please don't think that this is pathognomonic or very specific for TGA. It can be found in other hearts as well like uh, rectal TGA, DRV TGA, common arterial prong, top pulmonary aresia and so on. So it is not a very specific sign. Now we see a VSD with override a single outflow tract. So it should be VSD not VID. I apologize for that spelling error. So here you see only one outflow tract and when you look at the color flow you see that this one outflow tract there is a blue flow that is a iota while there is a retrograde flow that is a red flow into the other outflow tract. This means that there is a large BSD and overriding iota. The pulmonary artery is receiving blood from the ductus arteriosus in a retrograde manner. So this cannot be labeled as a common arterial trunk. So this is an example of BSD with pulmonary atresia. So anti-grade flow into the iota while there is a retrograde flow into the pulmonary artery. So this is the second entity where there is a BSD with a single outflow tract. That's a single outflow tract. There, the pulmonary artery is arising from single outflow tract. See, the direction of color flow is same in both. So that is called common arterial trunk. So how do you differentiate between truncus arteriosus and top pulmonary atresia? In both conditions, there's a single outflow tract, which is continuous as the iota. In the common arterial trunk, the direction of flow is same in both the uh, arteries as we can see here while in VSD with pulmonary atresia iota gets anti-grade flow while pulmonary artery gets the retrograde flow through the ductus arteriosus. This is how you differentiate between common arterial trunk and top pulmonary atresia. So whenever you see a single outflow tract please do not label all of them as a common arterial trunk that is completely wrong. Common arterial trunk means there is one outflow which continues as iota, pulmonary artery also arises from the same. 